just as an intro to this, I am in no way a qualified electrician. And as probably is obvious from all of my videos, I am not qualified to be fixing cars. I'm just an idiot with a 205. So please look what I'm doing, give yourself some ideas. But if you're not sure what you're doing, uh, consult someone else, ideally who knows what they're doing. And uh, good luck. Following on from the previous video attaching the fog lights to the front bumper, we're now going to be wiring those up and I'm wiring them straight into the fog light switch here. So basically the front and back will come on together, there won't be any nice flashy front one separate. I just think I'll get it all together. I mean, that'll do the job when we've got fog lights and I'm gonna be on all the time to look cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is here, someone has wired in this 12 volt socket, so it's a bit dodgy, but if I just push one way, that is very easy to unclip there. And it was just a bit of pressure to the side. If you've done that a few times, it'll become pretty obvious. And as I said, someone has sort of bodged in this 12 volt. So I'm going to pull the two wires off the back there. Two wires off the back. This little panel here, which if you get your fingers under, just pops down and away. The bit that is going to be hard to show you is here. So now we've got everything out of the way there. There's two little metal pins. Um, now here's one I preferred earlier, but basically they sit attaching one there. And that pulls down and off if you pry something off with it and one that side as well and again they need to come off and as you can see they've got little tangs on to hold in place so it just requires a bit of pressure you can pull it down with them on but you do risk snapping something so those are off and out of the way what we're going to do now is the little holes here that hold this piece in and you'll know when it's in because it'll become loose and there it is it should just pop once I get that right in. Same with the other side. I'm not using any sophisticated tools for this as you can see. Those were just a couple of nails I had to hand. So I know this is rather hard to see when I'm doing it like this but they will just pop in. There it is, one off. And just get this other one off. this full YouTube style of course and they're both off there so we have got back to the pins either side uh, the switch which will just pop off first so it's just a bit of pressure to pull that off there Let's see if that works and then this is just again a release so I'm just doing the same thing I could find something a bit more useful like a trim tool but I don't have any to hand so once you see that, there's a couple of little slots either side of a plastic piece. And I'm just going to slot a couple of these screw these pins back in again. Really find something more useful than this because this is not the best tool for the job. Okay, we've popped them out either side so it just pulls forward and now you can pull it out. And we can see what wires we have going in. The next job really is going to be, for me, I'm going to need a multimeter to see what's live. Let's see if I can find a wiring diagram. And I'm literally just going to hook up to there, right out the window, hook up to the front fog, and see what it looks like once I've got that connected. So it's, this is the cable I'll be using. This is correct 12 volt cable. I'm just going to see um, if I can get an effect before I start looking at wiring it through the car itself. So the answer is, if looking across the switch, um, you can probably see two right in the middle there, super focus, are uh, the two that join when the pin is pushed in, which makes this very easy. So we're looking at the orange there and the earth lead there. And if you put across those, you will indeed manage to get this switch to work the wire. That's like there for you. So as I say, I mean, it wasn't, you know, the way you normally do it, but I've just got it wired through window we've got the cable and I've literally just attached that one side there to the earth to hold it on there one side to the live there and when I press the switch the light will come on don't wire it to obviously the brown or anything because that is a permanent live so all you're going to do there is just have your fogs on all the time unless you want that when the lights go on there you go but obviously it means like the other ones if you've got the lights off the fogs aren't going to come on anyway so we've got a nice clean wiring in the next job then is to figure out how to get it through 
the chassis so we can wire it neatly. So now we've figured out the what's connected to what, we need to get to the wiring to put it through. I've taken the glove box before, off before, sorry, in previous videos uh, where we looked at removing bits of dash to get to the steering column, so you can have a look at that. Basically we need to take all the screws out of this plate here, which sits just below the glove box. You then need to take off a bolt at the back, um, which is in here, which just holds, sorry, that one there, which just holds the back plate onto the chassis basically. And then rather than remove this screw here, just loosen it off so that that can just basically come down off there. The actual then draw, the only thing that holds it in place is this tiny little plastic triangle here. So you just need to push it out the way. And now everything's loose, it just moves out the way. It all just pops off. And the best hole that I've found, I think I will be going with the one that feeds the bonnet latch. So if we look up here, and that's very hard to see at this point. But believe it or not, the cable feeds behind here, up here, and goes up through the chassis here. You can just about see that right in the centre of the shot. There, where I'm pointing. So I'm now going to see if there's enough space to feed my cable through there as well. In the end, I found the easiest way is to push the grommet out from the inside. I know this is very hard to see. There it is. And pull the cable through with it. So which means I've got about a meter or so, a meter and a half left inside the cabin just to be on the safe side. I'm just pushing this back down. And I'm just gonna pop the grommet back into place. I know you can't see very much in here. Um, this is a slightly faffy job and really requires two hands. So if this is the path you choose to go for, uh, I think it's probably easier than trying to force it through the other side. But it just takes a bit of pressure to get the grommet back in, but then none of these jobs are going to be super easy. There it is. But it's not the worst. And that looks basically factory with another cable running alongside now. Uh, I should say also I trimmed the end off the cables. You probably, I don't know if you can see that. Um, just to make it easier to push through rather than having bits of straggly wire at the other end. Uh, this end I've left as is for now. Because I'm not worried about that quite yet. But what we're going to be doing is looking for a route inside the car. I've got it to the first waypoint, which is now sticking out here. My arm is all the way inside. There, shoving the cable up, so the route is now not out behind there. It's coming up from here. It's going behind this plastic here. It basically runs all the way up here to come out here. As you can see, I've just pulled a couple of pieces off and loosened that slightly so I can get my arm behind. Um, and obviously now we've got to here. We're just going to go thread it behind and bring it out here. So that is a nice and easy job compared to getting it through there, but actually it could be a lot worse. This is a great thing about old cars. There's lots of holes and gaps and stuff. So running this cable, get it out here, and then that's when we're gonna start doing some splicing. And there it is through. Obviously if I'd bothered to get a piece of wire, it might be slightly easier if it's the last tiny bit, uh, but I couldn't be bothered. So you could just about see there's two layers. So I've had to push the front layer of plastic back and the bit you can just see behind uh, is the actual hole for the cables. If you put it in here, and when this was forward, you could sort of wedge it behind, but it would not really sit properly once it's all screwed back on. So make sure you get it behind, which is this bit of cable there. Um, the next job will be to, although you can't see it much there, tape it back with the other wires to keep it all from rubbing and moving around. And then obviously then we move on to the trimming stage. So I'm rooted out. We've come with the cable. Um, I've gone to zip tie onto here, running underneath the battery, where it goes over the metal edge here. I've zip tied it to the cable to stop it rubbing there, um, and then it drops down, and it zip ties to that piece of metal there, and it's also zip tied to the uh, tubing covering the electrics going to the other side. I'll also be using that to get across to the other light. So now we've come out here and we're going to solder these together. I'm not doing any joints or crimping or anything. Worry about that stuff later. It'll just be soldered and obviously if I need to take it off I'll just have to undo the joint and then solder it and then find a neat way of keeping that cable out of the way. Everything is wired up. Quick word of warning, this is really obvious. I was pretty stupid. You should normally take a photo of your wiring, see everything's going back in the right place didn't do that, plugged the 
uh, from the wrong side and instantly melted the first part of the shielding but turn it off straight away so it's safe down here but this first bit of shielding did in feed melt down a bit however I've put it through further down the connection so if I just pull this off here I don't know if it's not focusing what I want and hopefully you can see what I've done is I've looped it through the spade and soldered it on at the other side so it's a good solid connection on there and they're all separated there yeah, that doesn't look pretty, but it's safe, so we're okay. Now, um, I will be putting a bit of insulating tape around that once I'm done. Just to show you the connection there. On the outside, we're going to turn the lights on here. And, oh, yeah, ignore the rain and make everyone a bit dizzy and sick. So I managed to get some heat shrink on this piece. I've also put a bit of tape, so it just goes straight down there. It is then... There, zip tied onto the frame there, coming through the hole as designed. This side we have this triple connection, so again I tried to get the heat streak on, but the stuff I have isn't wide enough. So it's got some heat streak on and then it's taped and it's zip tied onto that bracket there just to get all three wires in safety. And as shown before, it's then looped back. and running underneath and zip tie all the way along God, that looks rusty again all the way along there uh, with the piping to keep it out of the way so obviously the sensible test now we've got everything wired up is pressing the switch I have blown the bulb by wiring it wrong but that is the switch on so when we go around now we are going to see fog lights yellow excellent fog lights I'm very pleased with that uh -huh. and then around the back of course and you'll see if everything goes to plan a rear fog light which is all connected so we haven't got a separate front and rear um, it's just one switch to get it all on and off but I'm not planning on running them for fun I will now have to get a new bulb for that but that is all everything wired up and connected. I now have to put everything back together, tidy up a bit, and maybe take another picture. Finished job, everything's back together, and it's looking very tidy. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, it's hard to grasp the brightness in this sort of light. In fact, to be fair, the headlights look different brightnesses. But there we go. Uh, it's not really too hard a job, just be more sensible than me. <laughs> um, and just plan your route, obviously. I'm sure people could do it neat and they could run it right inside the cable cores if they wanted to. But, I mean, the modern wiring that I'm using is going to be more than robust enough to stand up to running where it is. And, uh, obviously, I'm sure if someone was feeling really energetic, they could have a full separate switch for it. But I think it just to keep it looking factory in there, I'm pleased with what I've done. So, uh, good luck.